Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor and the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app. We're on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, also on Dash Radio on their Nothing But Net channel every single weeknight at 7 p.m. But I need to change this intro because we are also now officially partnered with Minute Media and Fan Sided. You will not notice a ton of changes to the podcast itself, but you will find it in a lot of different places. You will find more episodes. It is going to allow us to expand with additional personnel so really exciting news for us that after a while, we finally finalized this thing. So more details on that to come. Also, check out the Five Reasons YouTube channel. That is still operational. We got lots of great content there. We are filling it every day with Dolphins content. So if you're excited about this season, season tickets are sold out already for the Dolphins. So make sure you're checking out our content on the website. Uh, excuse me, on YouTube, Five Reasons. YouTube also on our website, fivereasonsports.com for the latest takeaways from Brady Hawk, Louis Sung, and others without a paywall. Also check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. This guy is a friend of the show. He should be a friend of yours also. He's based in North Lauderdale. His name is Mark Brown with a C, M-A-R-C Brown. Find him at markbrownpa.com or 954-566-5678. You need an estate plan. If you've got a family, make sure your money's going to the right place. And everybody wants to grab at it after you die. Okay. And then you'll be like, well, you'll be dead. So you won't know. But if you were alive, you'd be really upset because your money didn't go to the right place. And he can do this for you. Set up your estate plan really simply with the forms, inexpensive. Again, he'll explain it point by point. Make sure that you understand what you're doing. And if you mention five reasons, you get a discount. So reach out to Mark Brown. Again, it's 954 954- 566-5678. Also always mention this. He's got a title company right there in house. So he's a real estate expert. And that means he'll get your closing done for you too, if you're selling or buying a property. Again, markbrownpa.com, 954-566-5678. Mark wants me to take him on some heat road trips next year. Maybe. Give him some business. And now, today's episode. Down the gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buck the said, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor plan, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop the one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back on Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. No Brady again tonight. Gave Alex the night off. I've got Greg Sylvander on his vacation. We pulled him off the, uh, we pulled him off the road here today we're going to go back we, we did a kevin Durant episode yesterday there really was nothing new today so we will we will bump in with the transaction episodes when they're relevant uh, when something happens that we can react to but otherwise we're going to take you down sort of a heat history path here and we've been doing these top five episodes uh we did what do we do already we did uh top five underrated players in heat history right um what was the other one yeah. we did i can't even remember Top five underrated. Did we do um, top five? Oh my gosh, I'm completely it was blanking. Really memorable other- episode. Um, well, anyway, I don't know. We were going to do top five plays that you would run with any Heat players in history. We still are going to do that one, but we need Brady or Alex for that, right? There's another one that we've done, and we're going to look stupid when we go back and we forget it. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to go back to the list. All right, but today's we did this on our off the floor feed. You got to make sure that you're subscribed there because again, it's just $3 and five cents a month, but we provide plenty of exclusive content, but we also take your opinions on stuff and for various topics. I'm looking back here. Is it, we, I know we did another, Oh, top five mistakes of the Riley era. I wasn't on that one. I forced you and Alex to do that. one. Oh, there. see, I've tried to wipe that from my memory. Look, but you it's know what? successful. It's working. See? But we may bring it back today because I think there's a little crossover with this episode. All right. So today we're doing, top five most frustrating players in Miami heat history. And before we go forward, we didn't really discuss it beforehand, but our off the floor feed was pretty clear about the top two or the bottom two. So we are not even going to mention their names until we get to the break. Okay. So if you don't hear them in the next 10 minutes, when we do this, it's not that we forgot them. It's that they were such consensus choices that we're going to save them for the end. Okay. 
So I'm going to throw out a couple of names here for you, Greg. Maybe you've got your own. You can pull some, again, from the the off-the-floor feed. I'm going to go to two sort of players who were really good with the Heat, but everybody wanted them to be better. And I actually mentioned one of these as one of the most underrated players in Heat history because I think that he got a bad rap. But for a lot of people, Jamal Mashburn and Eddie Jones were frustrating. And they were frustrating because people saw the potential for more. In Eddie's case, it was the money. I, I still remember the contract, seven years for $86 million. At the time, that was exorbitant. That was the summer of 2000 where actually Riley was trying to get either Grant Hill or Tracy McGrady. And he went up to Orlando to kind of intercept them before they signed with the magic. And ultimately or, or the magic, both. he wanted both. Right. Uh, well, in, in Tracy's case, it was worth it. In Grant's case, that was after he got hurt against the heat in the playoffs. And actually the heat kind of dodged a bullet there, but they ended up with Eddie Jones uh, in a sign and trade trade. <laughs> they, they traded these guys for each other, essentially Mashburn and Eddie Jones. But the, the rap against both of the both of them was the same, was that when you needed them to really come through in the playoffs and be more than sort of the number three guy on the team, they tended to come up small. In Jamal's case, he just didn't shoot a lot. Uh, he wasn't as aggressive. Again, until he went against the Heat after they traded him, he wasn't as aggressive. In Eddie's case, he was just more inefficient for the most part. Um, and in Eddie's case, I think the game that everybody points to is the 2005 uh, Eastern Conference Finals against Detroit when Dwayne got hurt in game five and everybody, I remember I wrote a column, this is Eddie Jones's time to shine and he had one of his worst games in a Heat uniform and the Heat lost by about 40. I think they scored 70 something points, which took the Heat back to game seven and then they lost game seven because Dwayne wasn't right and they kept feeding Dwayne in the fourth and Shaq got pissed and that ruined Shaq's relationship with Stan and all that kind of stuff. I, to me, those are the two that jump out, even though they both had great moments with Miami, but I think everybody was frustrated that it wasn't more. Yeah. Then it, it stinks for both of them because they kind of, both of those guys were brought to Miami to be the third guy and didn't have to always end up playing as the third guy. Um, I want to I want to give a shout out specifically also to uh, Julius Cesar 25 on Twitter because he DM'd me about this topic as well. And uh, so anytime you have good ideas, definitely hit me up Twitter. Um, and this was a good one. Um, a couple names that I think are, are were interesting is Antoine Walker, which I can share the frustration with because there were moments where just his shot selection and just decision making is funny uh duncan robinson was one that started to come up which i think gosh he's not even been here that long and already starts to become frustrating and then a really good one that i um didn't think about when we started to conceptualize how to build this list was jermaine o'neal um was another guy that um people had there's uh, there's a few others uh, Dion waiters and such that that were on the list but you know the, the two at the at, at the top uh, set themselves apart. But those I thought were some interesting names in terms of Antoine Walker, Jermaine O'Neal, former all-stars that were in Miami, that guys got frustrated. Expectations is everything, right? We're not going to mention those two names. There is a clear number three. I'm going to get to him in a second um, before we get to those other two names. The reason I can't put Duncan on this list is you're talking about a former undrafted free agent. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, to me, that's not a guy you can put up there as extremely fr- too I mean, soon. I, right. I, I mean, I mean, I know I understand people are talking about the money, but the money was one year. And I mean, it's not like the guy was completely unplayable. Um, I, I think with Dion, the frustration was, was late, right? Like early on, like he signed for one year, $2.7 million. He way outplayed his contract. The problem was after he got paid, which is about, you know, we're going to talk about another guy in that regard. Um, but I, you know, when I look at some of the other names, Jermaine, I think Jermaine, it's, it's the playoffs that people were frustrated with. He had one of the worst postseasons a heat players ever had. And especially when, you know, everybody knew he wasn't what he was before when he came to Miami, but people remembered the all-star and he just, he was awful in that postseason. So I, I understand that one going back a little bit. I think Harold minor was exceptionally frustrating for heat fans. They expected <laughs> baby Jordan um, you think <laughs> they, they, they didn't get, they didn't get baby Jordan um, from that era. I don't know that there was anybody else specific kind of pre Riley. I think mostly 
him. Willie Burton, maybe. They, there Willie was a Burton. moment where everyone thought Willie Burton could be a star, and that didn't happen. But that went away fast. So yep. I felt like, um, I don't know that Alec, that- the late Alec Kessler, I think, who I think was drafted the same year as Willie Burton. There were frustrations there. There were frustrations with Ronnie Cycli early on because, you know, at Syracuse he looked like he'd be a star. And he wasn't a star in Miami. He actually had better years, I think, after Miami, some, some of his uh, more productive seasons, even though, you know, he was a good player in Miami, but he wasn't a consistent defender. Uh, you know, I, looking at the big three era, um, there were people who were frustrated with Chris Bosh during some of his time in Miami. We talked about him yeah. also as being one of the most underrated. I have to mention this name, even though I called him the most underrated player in heat history. There are a lot of people who are frustrated with Mario Chalmers it's for true. a lot of different reasons, right? Under- understandably. I think Chris Bosch is an interesting one. I just want to sneak this in here. A lot of people that were really tough on Chris Bosch are very complimentary today. And I think mm. that if we had the receipts to prove it, which nobody has the energy to go look at it, we would find that, that, that there were some very harsh critics to Chris Bosch that do uh that did a complete 180 as we stand here today but rio too just because of the big shots and stuff but that's part of what made him great right well i think the frustrations for him were some of the bonehead plays i josh richardson i think there were frustrations with him too particularly as he got elevated in his role don't Stepping mention out of bounds don't don't me- right out of bounds don't mention the other rook because that to me that's the number three guy on this list uh but they're also they're also uh our frustrations with Bam Adebayo today that are similar to frustrations with Chris Bosch. And I, so I think we have to acknowledge that too, that, that there are those that are, that are frustrated with Bam, that he doesn't shoot more, that he's not more aggressive offensively, that he doesn't have an alpha mentality. So I think he fits in there too. Um, you know, when you hear, you see a lot of heat fans who just, they, they just don't buy it anymore. You know, they think Bam's basically hit his ceiling. So I think the frustration plays in, but to me, we're going to get to number three in a second. Okay. Before we do, I want to tell you about a great sponsor of the five reasons sports network, our friends over at therapist preferred, go to therapistpreferred.com, get your premium tincture, your gummies, your sports cream, all the CBD for recovery, for sleep. It's great stuff. Use that code five RSN. That's the number five. And then RSN doesn't have to be capitalized. And if you go to therapist preferred and you hit that code, you get 25% off your initial orders. So go to therapistpreferred.com for your premium CBD with the code 5RSN. All right, this guy to me could have been in the top two, but I, I do think the top two kind of stand apart. It's Justice Winslow. And I, you know, and part of that was, you know, the expectations that were put on him by Heat Twitter. Part of it was that he dropped to number 10 when he wasn't supposed to. Part of it that he was compared to the player taken right below him in Devin Booker. I do think that it should be noted that he turned out to be a better player than some of the guys taken in front of him, including a guy like Stanley Johnson, who the Heat were interested in. And there are others that was not a particularly good draft. If you look back at it, most of the guys flopped actually in the top 15. Um, I understand the frustration with not taking all the draft picks in, you know, instead of taking justice. But you can't argue with the fact that there was frustrations with his play. Uh, that, and and I, I think some of it was, you know, role. Him not being able to hit the rim when he takes shots. That was the big issue. That was a big issue. And, and look, there was that moment, right? When Point Justice and, you know, there were about two or three months there where it was like, okay, they have something here. But I, I think the frustrations, again, were it could have been Devin Booker. And it took Heat fans a little bit of time most to kind of realize, okay, the Heat screwed that one up, especially because you're talking about a Kentucky guard, <laughs> which they've been taking him, you know, they, they took one after and they could have taken a couple more. Um, but also I, I think the frustrations with Justice were partly because he was successful his first season. I mean, he was a major contributor on a team that could have gone to the Eastern Conference Finals if a couple, if Bosch hadn't gotten sick and another guy we're going to talk about hadn't gotten hurt. And he played a major role on that team along with Josh Richardson, but it just never seemed like he got any, and I hate to use this word, Greg, better. It just didn't seem, it, it, it just we, seemed like he maxed. And speaking of maxed, um, both of these guys got way more than they ever should have, but not the max. Did we go, did we say Dion and JJ? Cause I need to sneak their names in if we, well, we did, we did it. say Dion for sure. And you know, I don't okay. know if we said James Johnson, but I, I don't, 
See, I don't characterize James Johnson that way because I think everybody kind of knew what James Johnson was. I just think that That's was I, I, I think that was a loyalty overpay because, you know, Riley and the organization had been burned by Dwayne leaving and they wanted to show guys they were going to take care of them. And that's kind of what happened in 17. Um, I wouldn't put JJ. I, JJ was kind of, you know, a glorified role player that gave them a lot of good minutes. I mean, we could talk about Tyler Johnson too, but Tyler Johnson was the same player after yeah. they paid him as he was before they paid him. It's just that they it wasn't really him. frustrating. Yeah, no. you're right. But to me, justice was frustrating. Um, I mean, when you're talking about a guy who, you know, again, in Jimmy's first year, when Jimmy was out for the first couple games, and Justice had 27, seven and seven in that opening game and sat, I was in front of his locker and he said, I want to be a face of this franchise. And then he'd go three weeks without making a three and making a layup. That's frustrating. And I, I think the other thing that was frustrating too was Justice looked like the quintessential heat player as a rookie. And then as time went on, they kind of realized he wasn't really a good fit for the quote unquote culture. And, and that's, I think that was frustrating because I think we had him pegged a little bit wrong too. Yeah. Because he did seem like kind of a grit and grind type player. It's rare that that happens. You right. Know? It doesn't usually go that direction. So we got justice at number three, but there are two clear winners, losers. I don't know what we want to characterize them. I almost feel bad that Alex is not on this pod because he would defend one of these guys to the death. Before we do, though, I want to tell you about another great sponsor, the Five Reasons Sports Network, Prize Picks. That is our official fantasy sponsor. That code still works, people. Code is five, F-I-V-E, and the NFL props are up, the season props, the preseason props. Get on there now. Get your initial deposit matched up to $100. Use the code five, F-I-V-E. You can download Prize Picks from the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. Just go to Prize Picks. Dot com. All right. There are two choices here and I have a clear winner on this or loser, but I, I don't know which one you're going to pick. Uh, <laughs> you sure. <laughs> okay. I mean, and, and there are similar reasons why they didn't work out. Okay. Because both of these guys were totally different than the types of players that the heat typically draft or pay. So the first one is the one they drafted, which was Michael Beasley in 2008, number two overall pick. We all know the story. Um, Pat wanted to trade down. Randy Fund was really the guy driving the Beasley train. Train. I don't think any. I remember being at that press conference when Michael was introduced and everybody was gushing over him. And I think everybody understood why they were gushing over him. I mean, he was the best player in the country the previous year. He's one of the easiest scorers I've ever seen. Um, I mean, he looked, I mean, we talk about Durant the year before, like Beasley was next. Supposedly they were close. They grew up together. Everybody thought he was going to be a star. Of course, looking back that he should have drafted Westbrook or if they had traded down, Pat was probably going to take Brooke Lopez that year who ended up going 10th, but he took Beasley and it just never clicked. Um, I mean, the first year, again, UD went to the bench to accommodate Beasley second season Dwayne's frustrations with Beasley were obvious um, that he, those were kind of the get, get me out of here type moments. I think everybody liked Michael. Um, everybody likes Michael. I, I don't think there's any question about that. It's just that the defensive awareness, the attention to detail, the other stuff, it just never got there. And Eric never got completely comfortable with him. And for a young coach, he needed to count on somebody at that time. He couldn't. So he kept going back to Haslam. He's one. Here's the other one. And I'm going to let you decide. Hassan Whiteside, totally different case, not drafted by the Heat. Unbelievable surprise story at the beginning. People forget. I mean, he was doing it with blocks, right? I mean, he was, I mean, I watched that game against Chicago and I'm like, they got the second coming here. But there were signs at the time. I remember talking to David Griffin because I was actually covering the Cavs that year about why they didn't take a chance on Whiteside because they needed a big. They went and went out and traded for Mozgov. And he basically said, you know, he pointed to his head. Okay. And, and that was the thing. Um, and it just, you know, I don't know if it was the money. I mean, I talked to Hassan many times about that. And he talked about how he continued to work hard. What Eric used to say to me about it was he works hard, but you have to work smart and you got to work with. And he just, he was, he worked, he would work in the weight room but it wasn't like with his teammates. He wasn't all on the same page. The difference is he wasn't drafted by the Heat, but their investment came later with the money. 
And that's where Heat fans got upset. Where do you lean here? Who is the most frustrating player? Because I think Michael Beasley has more natural talent than Hassan. Who is the most yeah. frustrating player in Heat history? I mean, definitely when Michael Beasley was drafted and coming into those first few years, like I had high hopes that he was going to be like that other pillar next to Dwayne. And when he didn't fulfill that role, absolutely. That's frustrating. And it, it's, it's stunk to see. Um, and he, you're right. Like the talent, that was the big thing with Michael Beasley. You, you could see it. There were moments where he was just so good. Hassan, it was a different story for me. It always had to do with attitude before he even got his max contract. There were moments throughout the season where I had heard that, um, that they were, were like over it way before the, the max contract came into play. And I think that there was a lot of, you had to retain your assets and you didn't want them to walk out the door at that time. I don't know. In, and it's easy with the benefit of hindsight, but, um, because of Whiteside's attitude and consistent attitude, for me, I think that that's the bigger disappointment because when you give a guy a max contract, you're essentially saying, like, become a leader. And Michael Beasley never got that opportunity because he didn't get to his next contract in Miami. And here's the other thing to consider, Ethan, and then um, we can close, is that the front office – with Michael Beasley's disappointment, they made up for it very quickly because the big three came into focus fast. And with Whiteside, it was a little bit more drawn out. Luckily, we'll always remember that Whiteside, they got Jimmy Butler for, for her son Whiteside. So things worked out there too. But I think ultimately the reason why Beasley doesn't hurt as bad today from, for Heat fans is because it, was, <laughs> it, it left our memory because all of a sudden the big three came to town couple of things on this one. They liked Michael enough to bring him back twice. So that's the first thing they would not bring Hassan back. So I, I think to me, that settles the argument here. Um, you know, because, because again, I, I don't think Beasley made any enemies inside the organization. I just think they believed he could have been more if he could have locked in. And, you know, from the very beginning, he wasn't locked in. I, I, I went to, I was at summer league in 2008 in Orlando. And Michael, I don't know if it was his first or his second. I mean, I think it was his first game. He was playing against a big named Sean Williams, uh, who was with the Nets at the time. And you could not foul out of those summer league games. So Michael had 12 fouls. Um, and, and I mean, and, and, and Sean Williams ate him for lunch. And what, what actually stuck out to me about that game, too, was that Chalmers was great. And I was like, wait, they might have a point guard here. Because, I, you know, he was the second round, or he was the 30th overall pick. He was the second round pick. And he was just so much, I, I don't know, he was just in, more in tune than Beasley. I know that they got popped at rookie orientation together. Okay, now that wouldn't be a big deal because everybody in the league smoking weed out in public. Uh, but, but, you know, th th that, that was a big issue at the time. But I, I think that, again, Beasley's talent made him frustrating. Um, his fit with the Heat made him frustrating. But Whiteside's attitude made him much more frustrating, I think. I, if, you, if you were to say to Eric Spolster right now, I'd love to ask Eric this question. He'd never answer it. If you were to say to Spolster right now, you got to coach one for three weeks, okay? You got to coach one. You can take Beasley or you can take Whiteside. He would literally let Beasley move into his house, okay? See, Spo needs to go sit in the barber chair with LeBron on that show. <laughs> where they speak openly, eventually Spolster will get there and then we'll hear. It's so funny you mentioned LeBron because I'll close with this. And thanks to our sponsors, therapistpreferred.com. Uh, price picks, use the code five and markbrownpa.com. I remember being in Atlanta that year. I was forced to cover the Cavs for Bleacher Report. And I was at the game ended and I went in the locker room and, and, and they were watching the Heat game, a bunch of them on their phones, a bunch of the Cavs were. LeBron was watching on his phone. And, and he's looking and I, I was actually standing next to him because he, he knew I was still in tune with the heat. So LeBron would ask me stuff that was going on with the heat and LeBron always liked Beasley. Okay. But he thought it was kind of funny that the heat were relying on Beasley in the season that after LeBron left, like the heat's answers ended up being Henry Walker and Michael Beasley. And so <laughs> LeBron's watching it. And I'm pretty sure that was the game that Michael didn't get the shot off in time. There was an inbounds. I don't know if you remember that it was two, 2014-15 season. There were a lot of these, but 
He just, he brain locked and didn't get the shot off in time. That's the story of Michael Beasley <laughs> with, with my feet because LeBron was cracking up. The whole, and again, he liked Michael. Remember, Michael came to the heat, um, you know, with, with LeBron. So uh, when, when LeBron was there, but it just, it didn't work out. But I know Alex wants to see a fourth or fifth tour of duty for Beasley. I, I wish that it had worked out better because I, I, I've never met anybody who told me they didn't like Michael Beasley, right? No, and, and be clear to our uh, off the floor subscribers, shout out to many of you who did mention 2011 NBA Finals LeBron James is one of the most frustrating in franchise history, but that's for a very small percentage of his tenure. Actually, that probably should have been number one. I don't know. Or Mike Bibby. Anyway, thanks to our sponsors, Therapist Preferred.com, Prize Picks. Uh, I know people are going to th- say we forgot some, but I, I, I can't imagine we forgot anybody who would be above those two or actually with justice, those, those three. All right, we'll be back with more episodes this week. Thanks for joining us. Um, and if you are subscribed to Off the Floor, give us your suggestions for more episodes. We're going to be doing this all summer. Thank you for listening to The Five on the Floor on the Fire Regional Sports Network.